We're going to show you how to install a commercial door closer. These are very easy and you do need the instructions. Even though I will explain how to do it, all door closers come with instructions. The instructions are all the same, but they have varying uh, degrees of measurements that you need to take. So let's go through the three types of closer positions. Whenever possible, you always wanna go with the regular mount, and that's what this is called, the regular arm mount, which means the body of the closer gets attached to the door, and the arm goes on top of the closer, and then the arm attaches to the top of the jam. That's the regular arm mount, most common and easiest. So the second type is called the top jam mount. The body gets mounted on the top of the jam, and the arm gets mounted right here, then the arm gets mounted to the door. Now you can see they had it here before with the very small closer, the third configuration is called the parallel arm mount. And then it comes with this plate. All closers come with this plate. And that gets mounted at the top of the jam, like so. And the body of the closer gets mounted to the door. This piece comes off, so you don't need that bracket. And then the arm gets mounted directly to this plate. And then the arm would connect to the body of the closer. Why you would use those depends on which way your door swings and also what you have up here. All of these are explained in the instructions of the closer, so you have to open up the instructions, look at them, and then also look, you know, what do you have up here? So start with the regular arm mount. If you can't do that, move to the next scenario. If you can't do that, move to the next scenario. Sometimes you got to get very creative and make up your own scenario, but that's very rare. Again, here's the instructions. You see we have the uh, regular arm mount, top jam mount, and here's the parallel arm mount. So we're going to go with the regular arm mount. These instructions can look very confusing, but there's only a few things you need to know. Number one, how to orient the body. Now you see most of these closers they have screws that regulate the speed called speed regulation screws or the speed regulation valve it shows that it's on the left and here's our hinge so this is going to go up by the hinge and these are going to be on the left side so look at all of these numbers here all these measurements don't worry about all that stuff here's what you need to know how far is this top screw from the edge of the door. So you see here it says A, so there's the edge of the door, there's our top screw, and there's position A. So we go down here, what is dimension A? Well, if you want the door to open to 120 degrees, which is just a little bit more than 90, or do you want it to open to 180 degrees? Rarely need a door to open that. I always look for the 90 or 120. So, Dimension A, that's seven and three thirty seconds. Don't worry about all that stuff. It's usually gonna be somewhere between six and eight inches. So seven and three thirty seconds, we're just gonna call that seven and a quarter. So from the edge of the door to this is seven and a quarter. Don't worry about how high up or down it goes on the door. I'm gonna show you how you determine that. Now this is a continuous hinge, so it looks a little odd but I know the edge of my door is right under here, okay? So he said we wanted to go seven and a quarter, and these don't have to be exact. I know that top left hole is going at seven and a quarter, so that's really the only measurement I need for the body because I know I wanna put it parallel. So now the next thing is how high should this thing go? You don't wanna put it right on the edge of the door because it's gonna be very hard to screw in there. So here's my rule. I just open up the door a little bit. I drop this arm down here. Now you see the arm? It needs to close the top of the door. Okay, so if I mount the closer down here, it's not gonna clear. So you see how if I go up there, that's all I need to clear. I just kind of eye it up and know that that's how far down my body needs to go. So let's find my hole over here. I want to put that first screw right there. I'm going to pre-drill that one. 
because it's a lot easier. These closers will come with heavy duty self-tapping metal screws. They could come with heavy duty wood screws. They could come with three, they could come with through bolts. Um, sometimes you want to put your own two and a half inch bolt through there. It depends on the door. This is a brand new metal door and I know it's been reinforced up in here. So these sheet metal screws will hold this in place just fine. I'm just going to hold it up there level so it looks good and I'm going to mark my other holes. The first thing that's important to know is how are you going to orient this body? In other words, which is top and which is bottom because these look the same. So they have various valves. Sometimes the valves are on the end. Sometimes they could be on the top. You see, we have all of these set screws. So it says right here, latch speed, closing speed, and delayed action. So that's these three things. So with this, here's the hinge. So this is the left side of the door. It wants these valves on the left side. So this thing gets mounted that way. So now with all of our holes drilled, we've got our speed control valves facing the hinge. We'll put in our screws. So now we need to know where this piece attaches on the frame. And it's usually somewhere around here. So let's go back to the instructions and find out that measurement. Here's the edge of the door and here's our screw. So from our screw to this screw, they want five and seven sixteenths. So basically five and a half inches from here to here. And we don't really care how far up and down it goes. We'll figure that out. From the center of the screw over five and a half inches, we know that that hole has to go right there. And how high, you know, do we want to put it up here? No. You see, this thing can move, so this can go up and down. When this thing is in place, it's gonna be right here. If we just push this right up against that trim, we will be fine. Once again, I've pre-drilled, and I'm using this uh, self-tapping metal screw. When you look at those directions, they can be very intimidating and complicated, but you can see, we basically took two measurements from here to here, seven and a quarter. And then from here to here, five and a half. That's it. That's all you really need to know. Here's the picture of the regular arm mount, which is what we're doing. So before I put anything together, does this look like the picture? It does. So if you were going to put this on and you had this thing way over here, or you put this thing over here, you know, take a look at that picture and say, wait a second, I think I screwed up. It happens. So before I do anything, let's, let's figure out how the clothes are supposed to work. So imagine this thing is connected. When it opens here, you want the door to push shut. So in other words, this arm needs to pull back this way, because if it does, that will close the door. Okay, so this is how you load tension on the closer. You need an adjustable wrench, something that fits around this. Now you put it on here. Now you see when I pull this thing like that, I feel the tension. See that? It wants to go back on its own. So see, I pulled the tension and it wants to pull back, which would close the door. So what I want to do is push this thing all the way over, then drop the arm down. Then when I let go, it's going to want to pull that door shut. So sometimes you got to wiggle these things around a little bit and find it like right there. Okay. Now you see there's room for a screw in it. You put the screw in there and that keeps the arm from popping off. And you don't have to crank it down. You just get it on nice and snug and that'll hold the arm in place. You see it has these two screws that I can tighten that will hold this arm snug. Sometimes there's a locking nut here and you unscrew the arm to make it longer or shorter. So this one has these two uh, screws. Now we can let this go and we'll test it. First test is just open it up and see how it feels. And it goes all the way. This is, not, this is 90 and that thing should open to 120. We've got plenty of room there. Now we'll just let it go.
just install the door closer. But they don't always work that perfectly. You see this has a latch speed and a closing speed. Here's latch speed and closing speed. Okay, the closing speed controls the movement of the door basically from here to about there. So how fast do you want that to go? And then the latching speed controls the movement of the door from here to here. So ideally, you want the door to close gently and then when it's ready to latch, you want it to give a nice little oomph so that it's closed. So let's just see how it looks without doing anything. Kind of closed a little fast for my taste. So usually if you loosen it, it makes it go faster. And if you tighten it, it makes it go slower. So this is our closing speed. I'm just gonna tighten it quarter turn. Uh, see that? Nice and slow. That's too slow. <laughs> so we're gonna loosen this up again. <laughs> and we're gonna try this. There we go. Now I want it to latch a little faster. So this is our latching speed. So I'm gonna loosen this just a tiny bit. So it'll give us a little quicker close at the end. So let's try this. Even go a little bit more. I think a little slower on the closing. A little slower on the closing. This thing's very sensitive, so I just give it tiny turns. So now we got a nice slow close and then Gives you a whole cover, so we're going to use it, and it looks very nice. Check all your screws, everything's good, give it a final test. You're set, that's how you install a door closer.